Hi guys and welcome to another bootstrap video. This is Jamie from System22 and webdesignertechtips.com. Well we've been showcasing and building a few sort of hover effects using some WordPress plugins and also building them from scratch with various WordPress um, themes. So I thought it would be nice for those of you that like to code if we did it with Bootstrap too and we can build them from scratch. We're going to do a simple one today, a simple image swap. So you've got two images there. One's going to fade on top of the other one when we hover over the top of it. Really easy to do. So let's get started. I'm going to be using a text editor today called Brackets. It's a free text editor. If you want to download it, I'll put the link below this video. OK, so here we are in brackets. I've got a bootstrap starter template and this is what we're actually looking at on screen there. There's my little section with two columns in it. And we'll take this, we'll delete it and we'll start from scratch. Now, if you want the starter template, you can go to getbootstrap.com and you'll find it right here and I'll put this link below the video also. Okay, well let's get building. Well if we actually look at this before I refresh the page because I've deleted the code now, what we've got here is one image this image is the top image and that is the bottom image and to achieve this we've got a couple of divs one's got that image on it and then there's a div on top with another image that we're going to make fade in. So that's the sort of mechanics of it. Let's go ahead and build that. So the first thing I want to do is create a section. And within that section, I'm going to create a row or a div that is a row. So I'll give it a class of row. And in the row, first thing I want is a column I'm going to make it a column of two so with bootstrap four as I'm sure you already know it's got to add up to 12 so I'll make a, a column of mid six and if I have two of those that'll be two across the page which will equal 12 so let's go inside here div and we'll give this a class col mid six so that'll stretch across our page, or halfway across our page, I should say. Great. Now inside this div is where we want to put our first image. So we'll create another div inside of that one. And I'll give this a custom class. Something that I can remember. I am one perhaps for image one. Then we can have another column with image two perhaps. That way we can affect them with CSS differently. Okay, so let's just tidy this up a bit. Brackets is great. It's got a little beautify add-on. You just hit that and it'll sort it all out for you, which is great. And it's a good idea to keep things in order. Okay, so inside there is actually where we want our first image. So if I show you my folder, here's my root folder. I've got a couple of images in there and I've named them IMA, IMB, etc. up to E. And there's the index.html file, which is our bootstrap file that we're working on right here. So my first image, so this is going to be the hover image right here. The second one that you see, the open sign that we're putting in right now. And the one back there is going to be the background of our column. So let's go ahead and put in this image. And here's that image. I don't know if you can see that. I'll make it a little bit bigger. That one, IMA. And it's a JPEG. So in my next line here, I'm simply going to put in image and give it a class because I want it to be responsive. So 
So I'm going to say image fluid, which will make it take up the available space and make it responsive. IMG dash fluid. And then we want to tell it where the image is. And to do that, we say source SRC equals, and it's found it already because it's in the same folder as our index. We don't need to search for it because it automatically looks in the root folder or the folder that everything's in here where our index file is. That's the root folder. And as you can see, it's found all those images for us. And I want that one right there. Now, all images should have an alt tag. And alt tags should be used for descriptive purposes. Most people use them for SEO and put in keywords and geolocation data and what have you. But that's up to you. Use what you will. OK, so let's just close that out. And we've got our image. OK, if we look back at our page now, we should have a section with a row that's split into two. And the first one should be populated already with this image right here. Now, before we go there, if you notice over here, there's a little dot by our index HTML name. That lets us know we've made changes and haven't saved. So you can hit Control S or go out to File and Save to save it. Now we can go to our site. Now when I refresh here, these two we've taken away. We should be left with just this image on the left hand side there. So let's have a look. There it is. It's taking up both sides. OK. I don't want it to take up the whole of the half page like that. So I'm going to encase my row in a container, which will squeeze it up a little bit tighter. So we'll make a div right here and we'll give it the class of container. And we'll put the other one right at the end of our row here. With with Divi, if you click on an opening div, it'll show you the closing div. So we know to put this one right there. And then we can just move this one across. And let's give our section a bit of padding at the top. We'll give it 100 picks and that should let us see it nicely. Save our changes. Let's go back to the site and see what we've got here. Perfect. We've got a bit of a gap at the top. There's our first image of our first column and we can just duplicate that column and get another one here. We'll do that quickly. Back to our brackets and all we need to do, here's our first column. Let's select that column. Simply drop down and we'll change the image to image B perhaps. So when we save now we should have two columns. There we go, two images. Now these are the columns that we want to sort of fade out or actually fade in and have two images be appear behind them. OK, so what we need to do next is put a couple of images behind these. So let's go back and get that done. Now we need to write some CSS for that. Now we've given our columns classes of IM1 and we'll make this one IM2. So we can target it with some CSS and put different backgrounds on those things. OK, and let's write some CSS. And for this today, I'm going to write it on the page here. I'm going to write it up the top. Here's the original that we put in here. So let's just get rid of that. And here's the style tabs I put in. Now our first class for that first column was IM1. So it's a class, so it's dot IM1. Open and close some curly brackets and within the brackets is where we'll put our CSS. Now I want to want to put an image background there, so I'm going to put a background image. And I'll put this CSS down below if anybody wants to use it, you're welcome to. And what where is the image? Well it's already showing us options here. We'll use 
we can use URL probably be easiest for us right there and as you can see it's already found the images that are in our root, root folder again and I want IMD which is London Bridge for that one there it is right there once it's in there you can hover over it and it'll show you the image great and our second column is called IM2 so I'm going to copy this I'm just going to drop down and we'll say IM2 and for that I think I used IME as the image for that one all right let's save this we won't actually see any difference and refresh we won't see any difference I know there's two images there because we just put one in okay so what we need to do we need to make this one transparent so we can see the image behind it then when we hover on it we want the opacity or transparency to come forward so let's go and write our CSS to make make this happen and also to affect it we need to give this a class that's going to make it hover so let's go back and we'll do the class so let's go down and this first image right here let's give it the class or create a class we'll call it IHV for image hover and we'll give the same class to the second image there now we've got to tell this IHV class what it wants to do. So we'll go back up to our CSS. And I'll give this a title so we know what things are. Forward slash star star forward slash. And in between the two stars you can write your title and it won't be read as code. So this is column. Background. And now let's go down and we'll put in our hover CSS down below. And for this one we'll call it image fade. And the class we created for it was IHV for image hover. So it's a class, it has a dot. And let's open some, close some curly brackets. And the first thing we want to do is make it invisible. And to do that, we need to just write opacity 0, semicolon. And the time for it to take to fade to 0, we can do that with a transition duration. And we'll say, give it a time of 1.25 seconds that might be a little bit too too long but well, that'll do fine we can change it if we don't like it great so that's when we hover over it when we're not hovering over it rather it's going to be invisible now we are got to create something for when we are hovering over it so I'm going to copy it I'm going to drop down and right after the V with no space it's important you put no space then no space again and the word hover and that'll create the hover state for it and when we hover over it I want it to be one opacity of one which is fully visible don't need that transition transition duration because we've got it there already in the one above and that should do it just put a gap there let's save this and we should be good to go now if I refresh this page all right it's working but our background images are not showing up properly that's because at the moment they're their original size and we're just seeing a corner of the one on the right and a corner of the one on the left so let's change that and make that, those display properly And to do that, we can go into our background images here, put a semicolon. If you're adding a new line of code, you always got to make sure you've got a semicolon with CSS or else it will not read the next line. So we want to tell the background image not to repeat. So 
so that'd be background repeat no repeat that's fine and we also want to tell them to cover the background so they fit the actual size of the background and I know those images are the same dimensions so that should work out absolutely fine so I'll say background size size we'll say cover great and all I need to do is just copy those and put them in my IM2 class as well make sure I put that semicolon on there just tidy that up now we'll save let's go back and that should have fixed those display issues there there we go that's exactly what we want we've got our picture of tower bridge then when we roll over it 1.25 seconds later we've got our other image fading in and that should work just as well for this one so there you have it there's how to create an image effect with bootstrap 4 like i say i'll put that css down below you're welcome to use it so I hope you've enjoyed that and found it useful. If you have, please ring the bell, give it a thumbs up, comment, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.